All right, so in this video, we're going to prove a couple of results about how to compare upper and lower Darboux sums, even when the partitions are completely different in the two sums. So our ultimate goal here, oops, our goal is to show that L of F is always less than or equal to U of F, uh, just in any setting, pretty much, where any setting where these two numbers are defined, L of F has to be less than or equal to U of F. Um, so you know, our, uh, on the way there, what we want to show is, um, so, uh, you know, kind of intermediate step. We'll show that any lower sum is less than or equal to any upper sum <clears throat> for an arbitrary pair of, um, an arbitrary pair of partitions, uh, this is what we're going to show. So we start with a lemma, okay? Um, so here's the intuition, okay? So intuition. Uh, as, um, so as we uh, add points, to a partition. Um, <clears throat> the, the estimates, right? The estimates provided by the upper and lower sums should improve. So upper sums go down and lower sums go up, right? Because upper sums are overestimates and lower sums are underestimates. That way then, so then we could show that L of F P is less than or equal to L of F P union Q less than or equal to U of F P union Q less than or equal to U of F Q, right? So the idea is it's like, okay, P is some coarse, you know, a pro some coarse subdivision and Q is another coarse subdivision of the, of the interval. And it's like, you could improve both of those estimates by refining them both to like a common subdivision of the interval, like a common partition basically, right? P is like some random partition, Q is a random partition, but you can refine them both to a common partition by just taking their union, right? If you just take the union, then you get like a better partition. It's like more points in the interval, right? So the estimates should be better. So the lower sum should grow when you add in all the points from Q and the upper sum should shrink when you add in all the points from P. And then it's like, you can obviously compare those two because they're on equal footing. They have the same partition. So that lets us actually compare the two original ones that had like totally different intervals or totally different partitions, right? So um, that's, that's kind of the outline of what we're doing. Um, so this, idea is going to be a lemma here. This idea that, so this, is a lemma. Uh, it's actually lemma 32.2. Okay, so let me, um, I'm just going to draw a picture that kind of illustrates like the main idea of this lemma. Okay, so here's kind of a schematic of some upper sum for some random function, right? So you can see we have T1, T2, T3, T4, and then B, like A and B, right? And then T1, T2, T3, and T4. And, uh, and I drew the upper sum for that in the light red, right? And then if you add a new point U, so I just added a point U in between T2 and T3, uh, then what happens is that on each of these two new sub intervals, right, we kind of split the interval from T2 to T3 in two, okay? Uh, then like the supremum of F 
on each of these sub intervals has to be less than or equal to the supremum on the original like whole interval, right? Because each of these sub intervals is just a subset of the original interval from T2 to T3. So the supremum on each one of them is less or less than or equal to the original supremum. So the areas, the, the contributions of like these rectangles is also less than or equal. And you can see like the area goes down uh, because here on this one, the supremum is smaller, right? So um, what we're saying right here, so this was the original upper sum, right? And then now I added in U and here we have the new upper sum. So what we're saying is that um, U of F E is greater than or equal to U of F P union the point U. We added in the new point U, right? Uh, so in general, right, Uh, this is true. Oops. Uh, U of F P greater than or equal to U of F. Oops. P union some point. Uh, yeah. Let's say U. That's the letter they use. Uh, and similarly, L of F P is less than or equal to L of F P union U. So if P is a subset of, uh, let's say P prime, then P prime is obtained by adding some finite number of points to P. So, um, so by induction, right, if we just add the points one at a time, uh, you know, U of F P is greater than or equal to U of F P union one point, right? greater than or equal to U of F P union two points, right? And so on until you get to U of F, oops. Um, P prime, right? So you just add the points of P prime one by one until you, until you actually obtain P prime itself. And each time the upper sum has to go down and similarly, L of F P is less than or equal to L of, right? Less than or equal to L of this. Um, so basically, yeah, U of F P is greater than or equal to U of F P prime if P is a subset of P prime and L of F P is less than or equal to L of F P prime in the same situ situation, right? So this is exactly the intuition I was talking about before, that the upper sum should go down when you add more points and the lower sums go up, okay? So then that, so, you know, now, so that was the, basically the proof of 32.2. So 32.3 is another lemma, which basically says, that um, for any uh, bounded F on A, B, and any two partitions, uh, P and Q of A, B, um, we have that L, F, P, is less than or equal to U of F Q, right? And this is exactly what I was saying before, um, that uh, L of F P is less than or equal to L of F P union Q, less than or equal to U of F P union Q, less than or equal to U of F Q, right? 
Uh, so there's just, there basically there's a common refinement, a common refinement of the partitions P and Q that lets us actually compare them, okay? So, um, yeah, because P is a subset of P union Q, and of course, Q is also a subset of P union Q. So we're using the previous lemma, 32.2. Um, all right, so then, uh, lastly, to put this all together, right, our ultimate goal, if you remember, was to show, so if F is bounded on uh, a, B, then uh, L of F is less than or equal to U of F, right? So for this, we just say, okay, well, uh, yeah, so fix a partition P of A, B, and let Q be any partition of AB, then um, we know L of FP is less than or equal to U of FQ by what we just proved. Um, so since this is true for all such Q, so L of FP is a lower bound on the set of all possible upper sums. So uh, U of FQ, where Q is any partition of AB, right? So L of FP is less than or equal to U of F, right? Because U of F is the greatest lower bound since U of F is the greatest lower bound. But since P was arbitrary, uh, U of F, sorry, U of F is an upper bound on the set of L F P be a partition of A B. So L of F is less than or equal to U of F. Right, since L of S F L of F is the least upper bound. Okay. So that finishes the proof that L of F is less than or equal to U of F. So uh, I think uh, that's it for this video. And in the next one, we will formulate sort of a Cauchy criterion for integrability, uh, which I think is uh, fairly useful and fairly interesting. So yeah, um, that's it for this one. <laughs>